Hi there, uh, welcome to this almost podcast-like video, which has my Starfield impressions, a discussion of what I would like to see from the Elder Scrolls 6, and what I would like Bethesda to do with the Elder Scrolls IP. Uh, these are three things that I wanted to talk about on the channel for a while now, and I now have a new microphone that I wanted to test and do a few things with before actually making a video. So I decided to put all those things in one big video for convenience and not to litter the channel feed too much. I'll put timestamps in here just in case you want to listen to only one of the three. Uh, also this will mostly be unscripted but I do have some talking points for myself so I don't ramble too much. So you know just treat this as a podcast if you want, a Zork cast so to speak. Anyway let's start with Starfield. Now Starfield has been out for a bit now and I've put in about 70-80 hours and I still really can't, don't feel like I can do a full review of the game. I'll probably do one eventually, like at the end of the year, um, probably somewhere either at the end of this year or during the start of 2024, but consider this my first impressions. Spoiler free uh, first impressions by the way, even though probably everybody has played the game by now, but hey. I hate spoilers for every game that I play, so I'm going to keep it spoiler free as much as I can. So that being said, I already thought a bit about uh, what I wanted to do for my Ultimate Starfield review and I wanted to either call it a step in the right direction or I wanted to call my review I can't get in my damn shower. <laughs> either of those perfectly summarize my Starfield experience because on one hand this game has a lot of encouraging signs showing that Bethesda is improving and stepping up their game from the likes of Fallout 4, 76 and Skyrim at least in the storytelling department. Um, I'll explain what I mean by that, because not everything is great. But then on the other hand, it has these glaring flaws which remind us of an ancient past, as you would say. Uh, I've seen a lot of reviews bandwagoning and that the game feels ancient and is bad, and I think that's all a bit exaggerated. And at the same time, it's also true. I've seen people online saying that it's the best Bethesda game yet, and I think that's also exaggerated, and at least uh, from the past few games that they released, also kind of true. Uh, this is a very grey game for me, not black and white, I mean grey literally. I love a lot about the game, but I also hate a lot about the game. And I'm gonna start with the hate here and then move to the love. There will be enough love, but there are some things that I really want to get out of the way. The title that I came up with, I can't enter my damn shower, illustrates the bit of, bit of hate that I have. Uh, I will show it in my ultimate review of the game, which will have footage in the background and such. But in the houses that you own, you cannot enter the showers. Like, the cabins of the showers don't open. <laughs> the showers look really nice, but they're just non-interactive objects. And that kind of sucks, and it stuck with me about how dated the game can feel sometimes. I mean, the game feels like Fallout or Skyrim in space. Uh, just like Fallout and Skyrim, loading screens everywhere, uh, there's non-interactive objects everywhere, uh, graphics which are below the standards for the generation. Also, by the way, I have some. sometimes I have the feeling, although that could be like recency bias, or at least bias from playing some other games, that this game has even less interactive objects than Skyrim sometimes. But I could be wrong on that one. Uh, it's been a while since I actually played Skyrim for fun. Like, I played for, um, you know, the channel quite a lot. I play a lot of quests, go in it, go search for books, and that kind of thing. But I haven't really, like, role-played in the game as I did back when the game was pretty new. Or at least, like, until, like, 2016, 17, when I was really into playing it. And even now, when I play it for fun, I mostly play the missions. Like, I don't know. It's, it's been a while. Anyway, um, like I said, sometimes the graphics are a bit below the standard of the generation with Starfield, which is not new for Bethesda. It, it, although the game really doesn't look ugly, uh, at least in my opinion. Uh, the planetary exploration is basically just small levels. Uh, it's pretty boring, at least in my opinion, and the semi-auto-generated levels that you hop in between using a navigator and a loading screen... Uh, they, they just don't vibe with me personally. Uh, most planets have just one or two types of creatures on it. No animations for actions such as wrenching a screw loose. You just click on something and it just says it on the screen that you wrench the screw loose. Well, I mean, making an animation should be, shouldn't be that much work. Uh, very small cities compared to other games. That kind of thing. It all feels a bit dated. Like it's game, it's a game straight from the Xbox 360 era. Because again, it feels like Fallout or Skyrim in space. And all of that is amplified by the space aspect. Which is, on a first glance, 
a promising uh, something that promises endless exploration and freedom but at the same way the game is structured with loading screens everywhere and only relatively small chunks of randomly generated land on the planets being accessible uh, for exploration that makes it so that to me at least the open Beth the most open Bethesda game ever is for me at least the least open Bethesda game ever or at least that it feels that way uh, one without a real open world rather you know, because it isn't one open world, it's a collection of levels which want to seem like they form one coherent universe and depending on how much you buy into this universe, its lore and story, that may be fine and you may be able to immerse yourself, but to me personally, a guy who doesn't enjoy sci-fi all that much, it's just okay. Like, the different levels, they do a pretty okay job. Um, but it's just not for me, I guess. And the fact that there's like basically a collection of levels that you jump between with loading screens instead of one coherent universe, that kind of takes me out of the immersion even more than I already was. So, I don't know, it, that aspect I really dislike personally. Although I do know that it's probably not possible within the creation engine to make the thing that I envision Unless you have like a really strong computer, which probably doesn't exist since I've heard people tell me like this is just source due to trust me. Uh, like I, I don't know nothing about programming, so don't take this from me. But someone told me that basically the creation engine is so heavy that that's why the game doesn't look great, at least on like the most recent consoles. Um, and that's why it also is so limited with uh, the different world spaces being so small. But, you know... I don't know anything about game programming, so please don't take that from me and feel free to just yell at me in the comments, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Um, it's just okay for me. Like, the universe is filled with lore, and quite interesting lore, but it's not really a universe that I personally want to invest my time in to become as invested in as the Elder Scrolls, because I'm not really a sci-fi guy. Uh, and, you know, some of my friends absolutely love this universe, and because of their love for the universe, probably the immersion becomes better and thus the level-based world design becomes far less of a problem. But for me, the lore and the world, that just... It's... I'm, I'm, I'm frantically doing shit with my arms right now because I don't know how to say it, but it's just... I, I can't... I'm just not fully sold on it. Like, I don't know. I didn't really enjoy Mass Effect, personally. I, I played all four games, including Andromeda, at least a few hours because people kept telling me yeah the gameplay gets better but then at the same time i just felt myself not really buying into the sci-fi aspect like i like star wars but mostly because of nostalgia i guess because that was that was part of my childhood um so yeah i also notice myself getting bored sometimes in that sci-fi universe so i guess maybe that's this is all maybe just a me problem but at least the level-based world design in combination with a world that i'm not particularly interested in made it so that i'm not necessarily interested if you know what i mean all right so i'm basically done bitching now <laughs> um because there is also a lot that i really love about this game um although i do have to say i hate that the elevators are an insta click instead of fallout's moving elevators i mean i know that fallout's moving elevators took a lot longer of your time like yeah, you're in the elevator and it takes some time to get up, but I don't know, it added so much more for immersion. Meanwhile, Starfield is basically just click which floor you want to go to and you're done. You're, you're, you're just there, which uh, breaks immersion even further. I don't know, but I'm done bitching now, I promise, because all that being said, everybody who says that this is a dated garbage game and Skyrim and Fallout are much better have to watch their, wash their mouth because there's quite a lot of fun to be had in this game. Let's start with the story. I haven't completed all the main side quest lines yet. Actually, I only did one uh, and I did complete the main story. And the question is, is it good? Well, I enjoyed it. And I can just say that it isn't for everyone and is, in my experience, best experienced unspoiled. Uh, I can just say that the writing for the characters, at least, like the, the main side characters and some of the other characters, especially some in the side quest lines, or at least the one that I played, are at least on the level of Fallout 4's written companions, like Nick Valentine. I would say towards the higher end of the scale, but I heard people say online that they didn't enjoy the writing, but I don't know. I guess it's a taste thing, or people are just bandwagoning, or I have low standards. Might be. 
But I will just say that the characters were pretty good and way better than 99% of Skyrim's followers in my opinion. That being said, there is so much more fun to be had because a lot of the side quests are leagues above Skyrim and Fallout 4's quest, which are usually just go kill some raiders or bandits. I had so many side quests where I really dig the atmosphere in uh, Starfield. One particular thing that I really enjoyed was that one quest. Uh, I promise not to spoil. But there is this one quest without spoiling and you get this alien costume to scare some people away. Great quest by the way. It's a side quest somewhere in a random place. I'm not going to say where. But then on the other side of the galaxy in a completely unrelated quest. You find this spaceship where if you dock... Uh, that spaceship people are afraid that you may be an alien because their comms are down and it's it's hard to describe without spoilers but it makes sense in the game trust me they think you're an alien anyway these people in a completely unrelated side quest will actually react and be startled by you if you wear that completely unrelated alien costume that you got in a quest somewhere on the other side of the galaxy uh, because again this kind of thing may seem small, but them reacting to this other quest item from a completely different quest, I haven't really seen that all too much in Bethesda games, and it's that kind of detail to attention to detail that stream that seems like straight out of a CD Projekt Red game like Cyberpunk or The Witcher, and I simply never expected to find it here. I don't know if that's if that's because my standards have fallen or risen in recent years. I don't know. But I did really like it, and I found it a lot more. I found a lot more of these small things all around in the game. Really, the side quests are good, at least the ones that I played, and I love it. Again, I haven't even played three out of the four main side quest lines, so I can't really say anything about their quality. But for me, the moments that I had the most fun were just exploring the settlements and side questing because. The settlements are great. I won't spoil anything, but just exploring the town on Saturn Moon's Titan, the town is called New Homestead, that gave me so much hope for the Elder Scrolls 6 because the little quests there were great in terms of narrative and man, just exploring there and getting to know the people just felt good. And that isn't only the case for New Homestead. I've loved basically every settlement except for New Atlantis, the biggest one. I don't know why, but all the other ones were great. And I had fun in the quest so far. Great stories to tell and they just gave me so much hope for Bethesda's games in the future. Because these stories are their strong suit and they hit it out of the park compared to some of the more boring side quests that we can find in, for example, Skyrim and Fallout 4. Again, I haven't played a lot of Fallout 76. I meme on it a lot, but uh, I, someone told me to play it. <laughs> uh, just so I actually knew what I was talking about and I played it for like, I don't know, 10 hours and uh, not for me. It's just not for me. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, in the case of Starfield, it's pretty good. And you know what I also really liked about this game? The humor. You know, I really disliked Oblivion's Outer Worlds because it tried too hard to be funny. But Starfield manages to do it sometimes without trying. Like, for example, I don't think this is a spoiler... Uh, because it's at the very beginning of the game, but you have the parents perk which you can choose Which means that your parents are alive and you send them some money every Once in a while like part of your income goes to your parents and your parents in this game are just <laughs> Perfect they make me think of my own grandpa and grandma like they are funny and adorable in such a funny way I can't say much more without spoilers But you can sometimes come across them in like the best of places and their interactions are absolute gold Another thing that I really liked was something else you can get at the very beginning of the game, the mortgage perk. At the very start of the game, if you want, you can choose to have your own dream home, but you're weighed down by a mortgage, which you have to pay off, and if you don't pay, your house is just fucking locked. And I know, I, I just love that, like, that's kind of the sort of humor thing, where it's not too, um, oh, it's, it's not too, they don't try too hard, but it's just relatable. And there's also some random encounters which can be really hilarious. Like there's a guy who, he doesn't appear too often, but he, he's, he's sometimes there. Who keeps chasing you to try and sell you ship insurance for your spaceship. Or like there's a ship with, <coughs> sorry, students and a school teacher like on a school trip. I mean, the, ho the humor doesn't stay overstay its welcome most of the time and comes at nice intervals. Like not everything is great, but... It's 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 good. Like unlike Outer Worlds, which drowned you in humor, which in the end made it so that it wasn't all too funny anymore by the end, at least for me. But seriously, the, the character writing in this game is so good. I just 
I just really like it. Because a lot of people bitch about this game, but that part of the game, like the characters and the towns and just the, the smaller stories are really good. And that gives me so much hope for the Elder Scrolls 6 if they keep this standard up. I mean, I want to give more examples to convince you of this, but then I'll just ramble on eventually. But like, those kind of things are... They're just great in Starfield. Like, again, like I said, the game can feel dated. But at the same time, they put some real effort into this game and into the writing in some of the places. Main quest isn't for everyone. But, like, all the little stories... They're just so good. And on top of all that, the shipbuilding is great and just addictive. I mean, decorating my house is still as fun as it was in Skyrim. Like, it's still as fun as it was in Skyrim and Fallout 4. And I put far more hours into that than I would like to admit. And I can also just say quickly that Starfield's world would be so much better if it had been one big open world like Skyrim and Fallout 4. I heard a lot of people say that the engine limits this game and that it's outdated and should be re retired. And I disagree. <laughs> Yes, it would be better if they had a newer and more modern game engine, but the space exploration part is the thing that limits this game. The level-based game design feels so much more limited because it's space. If I imagine these settlements and cities all in one big interconnected map like Skyrim and Fallout, so no loading screens to get to different planets, just loading screens to get in and out of the city and maybe into buildings or and then to a bigger map, no matter how dated it may seem, but that's just the... Skyrim formula essentially, this engine still has the potential to give us that magical feeling that we had in Skyrim, Oblivion, Morrowind and I guess the Fallouts. I, I haven't played that much Fallout. Because just because the engine is not good enough for space exploration doesn't mean that a traditional Bethesda open world map can't work because it can and judging by how great some of the desert planet look, planets look, I think an Elder Scrolls game with one big Hammerfell map could be really good. And this game with its writing gives me so much hope and maybe a little bit of hype even for Elder Scrolls 6. Maybe I'm being too optimistic, but I'm just an optimistic guy. So, yeah, in conclusion, yeah, the Bethesda jank is there. This is a Bethesda game, the good and the bad. But honestly, there's just so much fun to be had in this game. I mean, not giving it a try, in my opinion, at least if you liked like Skyrim and Fallout, uh, if, uh, just give it a try. But just to remind yourself that you will be playing a game that feels out of the 360 era. But still a pretty good game out of the 360 era. That Anyway. Um, yeah, now we're going to talk a bit about my wishes for The Elder Scrolls 6. Because recently IGN confirmed that apparently Elder Scrolls 6 is now finally in full development. Meaning that it's finally time to talk about what I want. Because I never did that. Because I always saw it as too early, despite people asking me all the time what I want for the Elder Scrolls 6. First of all, I'll be assuming that we get Elder Scrolls 6 Hammerfell, because the teaser looked like the Hammerfell Coast. That being said, if we do get the Elder Scrolls 6 Hammerfell, please let it be with the sea and island exploration added. I realize that it would give us a lot of loading screens, but I think that sailing mechanics and a shipbuilder in the style of, you know, Starfield's um, spaceship builder can work. While it will probably mean that the sea will be just its own level, just like space in Starfield is its own level, I can see the sea being handled like an early Assassin's Creed, you know, the 3 and 4, where you needed to dock and then have a loading screen to the world space that you docked at. So basically, you, you sail somewhere and then you click... Uh, dock on, on the docks and then you can leave your ship towards the island. Is it ideal? No. Is it a dated concept? Yes. Could it be a lot of fun to sail around Hammerfell as a pirate and explore the many islands of the Abyss and Sea despite the dated design? Very much. Now, I also want some good factions for the Elder Scrolls 6, like interesting ones, all with their own quest lines, just like Skyrim, but maybe have the quest lines be a bit longer and a bit more engaging and just a bit more interesting in general. And more importantly, things that we haven't seen before. For example, I would love an Ash Abba faction, you know, or Ashaba, I mean. You know, the Red Guard Undead Hunters, a bit like Witchers. Maybe an Orsinium faction, since the new Orsinium is in the mountains between Skyrim and Hammerfell and is part of the Empire, which could give an interesting dynamic with the Forebear factions. The Crown Faction, and so the two main Red Guard factions, which obviously both should have their own questline. And I'd like them to be exclusive, like the Stormcloaks and the Imperials, since they are, you know, rivals. Even though they have reconciliated a bit uh, since the Great War, but still, 
I'd like them to have at least a bit of exclusivity between these two factions quest lines. Since obviously if you align yourself with one political faction, then the other would, would have been like, hey, bro, you're not part of us, you're part of them. Um, that could also give some replayability. Like, I get the idea of wanting to play everything in the game, but that would just make sense, at least for me. And then maybe make, like, the Imperial questline with Orsinium, or just an Orsinium questline in general, which doesn't have to be Imperial, but could be. Uh, have that be, you know, may maybe either really big and have some influence over what happens in Hammerfell, or make it like its own separate thing, just like, for example, how the story of the College of Winterhold is completely separate to the Civil War and the main questline in Skyrim. Um, probably the Dark Brotherhood is bound to make a comeback, uh, or maybe, you know, even something which looks like a Dark Brotherhood. I hope they will probably keep the Dark Brotherhood, and they probably will, since the Dark Brotherhood is like pretty marketable for the Elder Scrolls. As is a thieving faction, I mean, probably they'll make like a Thieves Guild-like faction uh, in Hammerfell. I don't know if it will be named the Thieves Guild or they'll invent something new, but we'll probably get that. Probably a Mage faction, which I hope will be both the Synod and the College of Whispers, since they have a comp you know, competition element between the two. Uh, and they are basically Tamriels, or at least the Empires, and also in Hammerfell, apparently, uh, main magical institution since the fall of the Mage's Guild. Um... But yeah, we're probably already getting into the too much to ask section as that many quest lines is pretty unlikely, but you know, a man can dream. Would also like a pirate quest line, you know. Maybe also a law quest line where you patrol the seas. Come on, Bethesda. Just asking for like 12 <laughs> plus quest lines. <laughs> probably not gonna get it. But something that I do really want to get is dungeon design variety. No more endless Nordic ruins or Reachman ruins using Nordic assets, like how you can find Red Eagle in a, dun in a Nordic dungeon in Skyrim. Like, there is a lore reason, but it's pretty obvious, like, that they needed to reuse assets that they already had. And I also would like them to put some effort into the different designs. Like, Elder Scrolls Online, how, how they do it, like... Again, there's a lot wrong with Elder Scrolls Online, but Elder Scrolls Online also does a lot right, which I really like. Like, for example, they put so much so much effort into making the different, like, culture-type ruins, especially with the recent DLCs. Like, for example, Hammerfell, I would like them to have Yakutan ruins, Ancient Elf ruins, uh, Dwemer ruins, Nidic ruins, Orcish ruins. I mean, let them all have different designs. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of work, but it's a franchise with a mega budget. Hire more designers or whatever i mean there's a lot of people oh shit uh, who got fired in the games industry especially in the last few weeks hire them <laughs> make elder scrolls like make a lot of work maybe hire some people from Zenimax online like again i don't like eso's gameplay all that much i'm not into mmos but come on you have to you have to admit there's so much love that goes into elder scrolls online's lore story world design like they put so much effort in you can't you can't I want to see that. Elder Scrolls Online, for all its flaws, because it has flaws, it raised the bar of what Elder Scrolls could be. Because every dungeon basically has its own lore story. Every every cave and stuff has all has like a few books or notes in it, like what happened there. Or even has like world uh, lore design so basically you can you can deduce what happened there based on the things in the ruins and while yeah that's the case for most of the places in skyrim and fallout um i would like it to be more like that and not like starfield where you sometimes have um places which just don't have lore because they're randomly generated like i would like them to be designed even though again to all, have all of this be perfect the way that I want, that's, that's that's a pretty tall order. And we're probably not going to get it, but I just hope we will, <laughs> even though we probably won't. I mean, those are my realistic wishes. I mean, except for the fact that I wish like 12 quest lines, but at least that that's possible. Like, in a perfect world, what I would like Elder Scrolls 6 to have are stuff like different ways of combat, just like... For example, one of the coolest things about was the game called Ghost of Tsushima, the PlayStation exclusive game, was that you had these four different katana or like oh my god, I have a friend who loves Japanese combat and he's gonna butcher me for this, but you had you had like this four different katana fighting styles, 
And I would love if Elder Scrolls incorporate some of that. Like if you have different fighting styles. But that's never going to happen. At least not in the Bethesda engine from what people have told me. Maybe it's possible. Like I would also like that there is this mod. Or this collection of mods. I don't know what it's called. And I've never tried to make it work. Since my computer probably can't handle it. But it's like Skyrim Super Overhaul 2023. And... Basically, the third-person combat no longer feels stiff and no longer feels locked to the character, but feels actually dynamic, just like you would see something like in Horizon Zero Dawn, Uncharted, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, where the camera feels fluid and the and the movement of the character feels good, and like you have a lock-on for enemies, and you actually like your combat doesn't feel like just smashing a guy with 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 your weapon, but actually feels like combat. Those mods. Like, if, if we can do it, Bethesda can do it, right? At least, I would think so. Um, although Starfield doesn't give me a lot of optimism for that, but maybe we'll get something like that, and I would love that, but I'm trying to temper my expectations, since there's a good chance that we won't be getting that. I mean, I would like it to look graphically impressing, but we've never really had that since Bethesda makes their games for the consoles of the generation. And, like, Skyrim looks beautiful on some PCs, but considering the creation engines load on PCs, we're not going to get that. But I hope it will. Like, that's that's one of my unrealistic wishes. Um, to be fair, I don't know how realistic my wish was for, like, uh, sea exploration and shipbuilding. But I think that's, like, the least that we should be getting. I wonder if they're going to put in a uh, town builder, like the, like the settlement builder from Fallout and Starfield. I don't know if it fits Elder Scrolls, but if they put it in, I hope that we'll, we'll get to restore like a like a uh, destroyed town. Like, for example, how Helgen was destroyed in Skyrim. Like, I hope we get to restore something like that and then actually have a quest line for that. Like, actually have scripted events, like scripted people come to you and be like, hey, I lived here and shit. And then you can discover some stuff about the people. Maybe even discover what brought the town to ruin if you weren't there when it got to ruin, of course. So, yeah, I think I think that's basically my Elder Scrolls 6 wishes. I'm just thinking if there's something that I haven't mentioned. Wait, right, there's one thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, recently, I've been replaying Elder Scrolls Online Thief Guild DLC. And even though there's flaws with that, I have to say, the city Abbas Landing is big. Like, I want that kind of scale of city. Like, it's, it's, it's not Witcher, Novigrad big, but it's like a decent size. I would like them to be at least that big, and talking about that Thieves Guild DLC, the f as far as I am right now, like, I haven't ever finished it. This is the first time I'm finishing it. It's not a story with ancient monsters or, you know, an ancient evil or a Daedric print. It's just someone betrayed someone. We want to find out who did it, and, like, this whole adventure with it... And then you play the individual stories of all the characters in the DLC who are actually pretty good characters. Like, they all have their individual quests which have you learn about them. I would like that kind of guild quest. It's, it's not really unrealistic. Um, but, like, that DLC, it's, like, the most genuine fun I've had with the Elder Scrolls Online in a long while. Uh, again, I haven't played a lot of Elder Scrolls Online's quest lines. I've played quite some of the base game, although, again, not all of it. Played some DLCs, but, like, that, that, that quest line is a lot of fun. I can really recommend it. There will probably be a video on the channel about that uh, quest line at some point, or at least about the lore of the merchant lords of the area, which is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, what else, what else, what else in terms of Elder Scrolls 6? I think that's it for now, to be honest. Um... Except for one thing, I would like them not to have dragons. They can have one somewhere in a cave or whatever, like, um, that, that would be fine. Like, just one is just hiding or whatever from the Dragonborn who is in Skyrim, or like the Blades in Skyrim. But I would like them to do that. Like, not have dragons. Dragons have been a bit overused, I think, uh, with Elder Scrolls. Like, one of the things that I liked about Oblivion was that it didn't have dragons, and then Skyrim introduced them in a really good way. But, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's been a bit too much, in my opinion. Like, we need, we, need, we need something else for the main story. Which, I mean, it would be okay if the main story was just, like, the standard Elder Scrolls plot, which is probably going to happen with, like, either a god or ancient evil, which needs to be stopped. Like, 
obviously they're gonna do that uh, again. I would be surprised if we got like a really weird political <laughs> quest line as the main quest line. Um, although I would like that for like the crowns and the forebears uh, quest line. But I have this feeling that the the main quest line is just gonna be stop an ancient evil again, and I'm and I'm uh, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Even though I really love like the the more world buildy um, political quest lines usually, but you know that's life. Um, but yeah, let let's let's keep it at that for now for the uh, Elder Scrolls Six wishes and move on to my wishes in general for the Elder Scrolls series because I have I have a certain annoyance or at least not not annoyance, but. Let's call it jealousy, because what I've seen Bethesda do with the IP is make Elder Scrolls Blades, which they stopped supporting, make Elder Scrolls Legends, which they stopped supporting. Legends being, at least in my opinion, better than Blades, simply because it felt more substantial as a whole game, while Blades felt like a pretty short experience. Uh, it had some problems with microtransactions. I guess it still does, uh, which limit you from actually playing the story. But on the other hand, you know, it's a free game. So what can we expect, really? Like, they can't make money of the game if <laughs> um, if you can play through it in, like, a few hours and never have to, like, ever get a, have a chance of, uh, you know, spending some money in the store if they only do cosmetics. Since the town doesn't really matter, or even though town cosmetics are like the main thing that they sell. I would prefer Elder Scrolls Blades to have been like $20 and just play through the entire story. Because the story is okay. Um, but, uh, let's, let's not spend too much time on that. What I can say about it is... It's, it, it's a wasted potential by now, since I think the game, even though, despite its flaws, had some potential, but they just stopped supporting it. Like, they haven't said that they stopped supporting it, but, but they've stopped supporting it. <laughs> um, and then, recently, they released Elder Scrolls Castles, a weird Fallout Shelter-like Elder Scrolls game on the Android Play Store in Early Access. And there's some lore in it. But other than that, it's a completely non-canon spin-off, since basically it, uh, it takes elements from all the eras and just... Like for example, you can recruit Tiber Septim to your castle <laughs> as a character. Uh, just like the Fallout version, in which you can take characters from all kind of games, like the Fallout Shelter, um, into your shelter. Which, I guess, it's fine. I don't like it. Like, I'm personally not a fan of Elder Scrolls Castles. I've played, like, a few hours... And then I just gave up. And to be fair, some people from the UESP that I talked with in Imperial Library, they datamined the game. And they found that there's some lore in it. No real story, but like there's some lore in item descriptions and stuff. Um, and for example, with Tiber Septin, they, they kind of put a doubt whether it's actually him. Like in his description, it says something like, could this actually be Tiber Septin? Well, I don't know. I just don't like it. Um, but I see those things and I think... Why? You have the perfect fantasy world. Thousands of fans, like honestly, I mean, you guys are still watching my videos. Not that many as in 2016, in like the good videos when Elder Scrolls was far more relevant than now. But still, I mean, there's a big fan base. And then I think other studios license out their IPs or they hire other studios to make games with their universe and their IPs like for example the biggest ex example is Mario of course which has like Mario Kart Mario RPG Mario this Mario that and I wouldn't like them to make Elder Scrolls Kart but I would like to do them would like them to do more with the IP than that they're doing now like basically just release Elder Scrolls online uh, DLCs and have um, you know small mobile games until the uh, the Elder Scrolls 6 eventually releases because there are other things they could do like what I would like them to do is hire other studios and maybe creators to make an actual official Elder Scrolls strategy game first of all like we have Elder Scrolls Total War like a mod for Medieval 2 Total War and we of course have Elder Kings like the Crusader Kings strategy game but both of those are not official but so many people play them like, just imagine them actually hiring either Paradox or 
Creative Assembly from uh, Total War to make an official Elder Scrolls Total War or Elder Scrolls Paradox strategy game. And then, you know, that would be a great way to tell war stories through official scenarios with official objectives. Like, just have a quest line where you basically have to play through a few levels or, like, accomplish certain objectives in the Great War. That, w that, that would be great. Like, the Bethesda creation engine will never be able to handle massive scale battles on screen. Like, never. So, a game like that, like a Total War game or Paradox game, like, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of Total War, personally, would be almost godly to have for like war stories like imagine just like an open world like non-canon campaign where you can just try and conquer people uh, either in the second era or in like the fourth era but then also have an official scenario so for example a war of the red diamond scenario where you have uh, Patema and Uriel the third in the north of Tamriel and then Kintara I believe and her father or uncle i don't remember in the south like you just have to fight that civil war or a great war scenario or even a second great war scenario as like a setup to the elder scroll 6 maybe the second great war has already passed and then we can just play through that in this game that that will be amazing but a second thing that i really would like and a lot of people are going to disagree with this but I would like a linear Elder Scrolls adventure game to tell a story with actual like set characters. Like you can't make your own character, but you have characters which they can just go wild with in terms of character design and character backstory and just have it make sense. Like like Uncharted, where everybody has their own motivations and yeah, it isn't as sandboxy as Elder Scrolls is known for, but the Elder Scrolls universe and just characters and races and places, they have such a potential for storytelling that that kind of game like a linear story to play through would just be amazing in my opinion just like a third thing that i really want is official elder scrolls novels which would expand the lore like for example warhammer gets like we got two elder scrolls books infernal city and lord of souls they were decent weren't great but they were decent uh, they were basically commissioned by bethesda to bridge the gap between oblivion and skyrim in a semi um, you know, semi-direct way to just explain some of the things that happened after the Oblivion Crisis. But, man, my one friend really likes Warhammer. Like, I know nothing about Warhammer, but a friend of mine really likes it, and he just has, like, the Black Library, uh, which is a company which just hires authors to make these, these books in the Warhammer universe, actual novels, crime novels, uh, war stories, uh, other types of stories, like, I, I have no idea, I've never read them. But I would like that in the Elder Scrolls universe. Imagine just, like, one novel of, like, Penetus Oculatus agents trying to accomplish a mission, because that's actually what I'm writing myself right now. Um, although mine's, mine is quite bad, like, they need an actual author. Or just a story set during the Great War, like, novels, like, Elder Scrolls universe has the potential for that. Like, we've seen it in Infernal City and Lord of Souls, which were pretty fun to read. A book in the Elder Scrolls universe straight up works. You know, just have, like, an author pitch a story idea to someone from Bethesda and just being like, hey, man, I have this idea. This and this are the lore things that I would like to put into it. Are you okay with that? And, that they, could, and they could just license out the IP. That would be amazing to keep the lore alive. And I really like the idea or just have some writers from bethesda or Zenimax do it I don't, I don't care i just want books to read man and mainly i'm just jealous of warhammer <laughs> oh my god my friends get so many cool my friend gets so many cool books and i just I, i'm just i'm just i don't know i just wish we had that for the elder scrolls universe now, a final thing that I really want Bethesda to do with the with the with, with the brand is make it more accessible. Instead of the Elder Scrolls Blades on mobile, just give us a mobile port of Morrowind. Have it cost like a few, like five euros, that's or five dollars, because that's what it costs on Steam most of the time anyway. Give us a mobile port of Morrowind, uh, just straight up Morrowind, and maybe Oblivion as well. If like, like most modern phones should be able to handle Oblivion in a good port. Also give us a Switch port of both. I mean, not asking for much here, just four new releases. I know the Steam Deck exists, but it's just so uncomfortable to use for me. I don't know why. I've used it twice at a friend's house, and it's just not, not my thing. But yeah, 
I would really, really like to have that kind of thing for the Elder Scrolls universe. Anyway, uh, if you listened all this way, you've listened to a very long mic test uh, of basically all my ramblings. And I thank you for that. Um, yeah, I hope you like the new microphone. I hope it was okay to listen to. And I'll see you in the next lore video. Uh, also, for people who wonder where the video is with the book that I was going to show, I'm really afraid of copyright issues. And somewhere in that video I say, hey guys, if you want a scan of any of these artworks, just tell me in the comments and I'll upload it. Yeah, that, that's probably going to get me in a lot of trouble. So I actually need to re-render the video. But, you know, it's a 4K video in, th in 30 minutes. I have a computer which barely works as a video maker. So that basically takes four hours last time that I needed to render it. And I don't have that much time that I can be without my computer for my work, university, <laughs> and YouTube. So I'm basically looking for a moment where I can just do that. And that sounds really sad. But, I don't know. I just haven't really found I found a moment to re-render it. But it's still going to come. Don't worry about it. I just don't wanna, want Bethesda's copyright ninjas to come and get me. Because I can't distribute uh, the images. But I can show it in a... Um, unboxing style video so you're gonna get to see it all in glorious 4k but my computer is just too bad to render 4k anyway enough rambling thank you for listening and uh, yeah i'll talk to you later in the next elder scrolls lore video bye bye